Dr. Mordred's a 1992 fantasy horror film from directors Albert and Charles Band. The movie opens with a nice long pan through Dr. Mordred's lair. Mordred's talking to old space face known as Monitor. Monitor's telling Mordred that a metal band called Death's Head is coming to take over the Earth. The Death's Head will seek you out. Over in stock footage Rio de Janeiro. Hey, Well, that seems rather extreme. If he wanted to drive, he could have just asked. The guard then takes these metal cases out of the truck that totally are not just spray-painted wood. Oh, this must be the lead singer of Death's Head. He uses some weak old coffee to teleport the boxes someplace else. He then gets the guard to kill himself. Back in New York in Dr. Morger's lair, uh, nothing like relaxing with a good book. He hears some commotion and goes to check it out. Two neighbors are arguing, and one of them is Cornholio's grandfather. Oh, you're threatening me. They go to talk to Samantha, who works at the police department, so she can help them settle their difference. That horse barks all night long at 3 o'clock in the morning. Is it the dog keeping you up all night, or the fact that it's really a beautiful sunny day? Samantha sees Mordred and tries to engage him in some small talk, and he uses his get out of boring conversation medallion. Oh, listen, I'm kind of curious about... Is this the apartment from Sliver? Mordred hears a news report about a missing shipment of platinum, so he marks his map. Look, kids, this was Google before the internet. Samantha goes to see a lecture that Dr. Mordred's giving. It's not exactly TED Talks. We all know that when things get a little crazy, someone always remarks, there must be a full moon tonight. Which explains what you're all doing here. <laughs> After the lecture, Mordred heads back to his lair. He puts on his robe and wizard hat to contact Monitor. Monitor, contact me. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. Monitor tells Mordred he has to teleport to another dimension to see if the deaths had escaped. In the process, his apartment catches on fire. Mordred arrives on the set of Deathstalker 2 and runs into his old friend Gunner. Gunner and others were guarding a guy named Cabal, but he killed them, melted his eyes, and escaped. Is it me or does this chainmail look like it's knitted? All I can do is try and keep a lid on those ugly bastards. You might have better luck keeping them in if you put clamps on the whole thing and not just one side. Mordred heals Gunner's eyes. I'm losing Earth time. Already days have passed since I arrived here. Then get back and nail that son of a sorcerer. Is that supposed to be an insult? Isn't Mordred also a sorcerer? Samantha thinks Mordred's apartment's on fire, so she sets off the alarm. Mordred, of course, gets back just in the nick of time. Mordred invites Sam into his apartment, which upsets Mrs. Golden. Good night, Mrs. Golden. Disgusting. Yeah, how disgusting, him being friendly to his neighbors and all. Samantha's checking out his library, his medallion, and his pet raven. Ah! <gasps> Who's this? Oh, that's Edgar Allen. He's my bodyguard. Over at the auditions for the Dr. Feelgood video, these two are desecrating a church, getting ready for the arrival of Cabal. Adrian's talking to Cabal to find out what his plans are. I'll kill them all for you, man. You don't have to tell us what you're going to do or anything. Okay, I'll do whatever you want. Just please don't have sex with my girlfriend. Ah, damn it. Since Mordred knows Cabal's free, he absorbs these crystal daggers. Bitch can't have just one. Cabal makes a grand entrance. The crystals of Endor. It will take more than that. No wonder they're not effective. They're made by Ewoks. The cops are investigating the burn marks found on Irene's body, and Sam tells them to talk to Mordred. So naturally, they just arrest him. As soon as I saw this, you see, this matches the burn marks on the dead girl's face. And then I started to question him. Wait a minute. No, they didn't. They just arrived at his place to arrest him before they even saw his amulet. Anton Mordred, open up. This is the police. Mordred's being interrogated by the police. He's trying to tell them about Cabal's intention, but the cop just isn't listening. And I guarantee you, Detective, Cabal's intentions are worse than evil. He's going to produce another Coldplay album. Thrill to the exciting cop can't get his coffee scene. Sam goes to talk to Mordred. He hypnotizes her to tell her about his past. They're using the Wayne and Gort diddly-doo music. 
Mordred and Cabal were two young sorcerer's apprentices. Mordred was good, and Cabal was evil. As they got older, Cabal tried to take over the Earth, so Mordred trapped him in this prison dimension. Mordred has Sam go to get his amulet. Cabal puts a spell on Adrian, which makes him invincible for 12 hours. He sends him to go and kill Mordred. Adrian gets himself arrested, so he can be where Mordred is. Sam takes the amulet and uses it on the cops to help Mordred escape. Sam and Mordred go to the park so he can transport his spear to the museum to stop Cabal from using the Philosopher's Stone. Adrian escapes to go and find Mordred. Cabal heads into the museum to find the Philosopher's Styrofoam. He starts the spell to free the demons from their prison. Mordred shows up to stop him and actually casts Magic Missile. Cabal animates the T-Rex skeleton and it kills the security guards. Mordred animates the mammoth and the two skeletons fight. Cabal spell works to free the demons. Yes, all four of them. They made it sound like it was an army. With Cabal distracted, Mordred uses the mammoth to impale him and imprisons his soul with the demons. Gunner then takes credit for the whole thing. Well, I'll be damned. I did it. Adrian shows up to kill Mordred, but he gets back in time to stop him. I thought you'd never get back. This guy says he's on a mission from his master to kill you? His master's dead. In that case... <laughs> Mondra tells Mordred he needs to return to the other side because the humans know too much. Well, no offense, Edgar, but there are other people I'd rather be spending my Christmas with. Mordred shows up to tell Sam he's going to another place that needs protection and wants her to come. And he puts on the charm. But first, we have to have a little egg dog <laughs> and watch our movie. The movie was filmed in Los Angeles for about $2 million. The movie was actually a combination of two things. It was originally supposed to be a Doctor Strange movie based on the Marvel character. The studio lost the rights to the character before filming began, so Charles Band, the head of Full Moon, decided to adapt it with another property. He had a script left over from his days at Empire Pictures called Doctor Mortalis. They merged the two scripts, removed any ties to Doctor Strange, and the end result was Doctor Mordred. Now, I'm thinking the nude scene was probably from the Doctor Mortalis side. Yvette Niper played Samantha. She's an actress I've always liked, but she never seemed to make it big. Probably the biggest thing she did was play Detective Lisa Madigan in the Robocop TV series and Prime Directives movies. The giant Brian Thompson played Cabal. He's been in tons of things, everything from a recurring character in The X-Files, to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, to the awesome but forgotten show Werewolf. He also has the dubious honor of playing Shao Kahn in the craptacular Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Jeffrey Combs was outstanding, as always, in the title role. He brought the right amount of quiet charm to the character and stole every scene he was in. At the time, he had been working with Full Moon and Empire and everything from Transfers 2 to Robot Jocks. The stop-motion dinosaurs were done by David Allen. He got his start in animation with Gumby and has worked in tons of movies, both big and small, over the years. He was even nominated for an Academy Award for his work on Young Sherlock Holmes. Much like Crash and Burn, they showed the stop-motion animation heavily in the trailer, and then it ended up just being a few short minutes at the end. The Fourth Dimension Castle was a miniature-scale model. Despite the initial production problems, the end result turned out quite well, mostly due to the very solid cast. It does feel almost like the pilot for a TV show, which isn't too hard to see considering its short 74-minute runtime. The optical effects are great, the story was entertaining, and the co-direction of Charles and his father, veteran director Albert Band, was very good. Also, the score by Charles' brother Richard is one of my favorites that he's done. It has the right synth orchestral feel for the film. Charles's son Alexander had a cameo as the kid in the museum. With all the full moon features being set up with the intention of becoming franchises, I'm amazed Dr. Mordred didn't continue. It had the perfect setup to be an ongoing series, but I guess the studio decided that what the world really needed was three prehysteria movies. Giants. I remember them being much bigger. Dickhead. 
Hey everyone, I just want to remind you, I have a Patreon set up. Uh, if you like the show and would like to help keep me going, even a dollar a month would make a difference. I would really appreciate it. I've got some cool rewards set up, so check it out. Thanks a lot.